It's the San Antonio Express taking on the Baltimore Ravens. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle with the Baltimore Ravens. Again, everyone, Brandon Gordon along with Charles Davis. And Charles, we take a look at this San Antonio team as they enter play. They come in off a loss last time out, but still in the midst of a great season. Winners of eight of their last ten. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, they come in off another victory a weekend ago. That ran their win streak up to seven now. And I think that win last week established them as Super Bowl frontrunners. They're playing with confidence and swagger, and you need that to go a long way. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. The Ravens offense going to work, and as usual, it's Lamar Jackson, the former MVP of the league, at the helm. After seeing what he did last week, throwing four touchdown passes, I had to go to my thesaurus to try and come up with some great words for what he did. I'm still coming up blank. He was scintillating. I'm, I'm going simple. I don't, I don't have your thesaurus. I'm going dynamite. He was dynamite. I'll take it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, and all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Mark Andrews hitting double digits with him. Tenth touchdown of the season. And the Ravens on just two plays have taken the lead. Tucker with the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And he returns this to the 22. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. And they will be led out by their 6-4 quarterback. And I'll bet he's talking to his guys about resisting the temptation to try and turn this into an up-and-down game. Almost like basketball, where both teams press and one team gets an advantage, our team's trying to run with them, and they're just not equipped for it. Doesn't matter whether you're equipped or not. Just settle in, get calm before you go for the big strikes. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. He'll drop to throw. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. That's where they'll take over. After the interception, here's Jackson. He's got his 6'5 receiver. That's Tim Patrick. A gain of six there on first. Jackson. 
Jackson with a handoff to Dobbins on the option. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Jackson. He'll dump this off complete to Dobbins. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. So that'll go as a four-yard loss on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. They spot it on the midfield stripe, so it is a 60-yard attempt here. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Back to throw here. Over the middle, complete. It's Lambert. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. He'll look to throw. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Preston Smith. He... the one to get him and that is sack number seven for him on the year and they'll send out their punter now as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away fair catch signal for and taken just shy of the 30 yard line that'll go in the books as just a 16 yard punt and the ravens they'll take over the Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Here's second and ten. On the option right is Jackson. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. From the gun, Jackson. He'll swing this out to Dobbins. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. And he was called on three times in the win last week as his first one hears away. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Back out comes San Antonio. And there, of course, was a lot of talk about this ball game coming into play. Two division leaders in the AFC. Could this be a potential playoff preview down the line? Yeah, and I think when you're talking about the talk about this game coming into play, you're talking about me because I blew up your phone all week prior to this one. I'm so excited about this game because, to me, it's not out of the realm of possibility that these two teams see each other again down the road. I like this matchup. They match up very well against each other. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored, give yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. 
The numbers for Cooks in that game last week. Five catches and even 60 yards and a touchdown. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. And he was able to get open there, but that's not always easy against this bunch defensively. We are deep enough into the season where numbers count. This is number one rated defense in the NFL. He'll have a tough time. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Play action. They'll throw. And that is incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there's good coverage there that forced the incompletion. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Now, look, that wasn't a huge game, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched him more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake. They've taken care of that early. He gets forward for about three yards. Now let's check on the call. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. They'll look to throw. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. They're going to look to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Give him nine yards on the second down screen play. Well, this defense for the Ravens, they were very good in the victory a week ago over Cincinnati. It was a little bit enlightening talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to correct. This is caught, it's Cooks. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. And coming into this ball game, this was an offense that wasn't just talking about the notion of ball control. They were preaching it. They wanted to win the time of possession battle, and they've done so here. This drive's taken up quite a bit of the first. And he'll take it into the end zone for a touchdown. A great play there. His 11th touchdown of the year. And the Express are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. It certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire...
Drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Point after try forthcoming. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. Seven, seven. That one in the books as a 12-play drive and a nine-yard run on the end of it. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. And Charles, no two ways around it. Anytime you get the current number one and number two seeds in the AFC playing each other this late in a season, it's a big game. It is definitely a big game, and not just for seeding and placement and such, but for trying to establish yourself as a team to be. You want everyone else in the league to look at you and say, boy, it's going to be tough to knock those guys off. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. On second and 12, Jackson uses the stiff arm. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Here's second and nine. Here's Jackson to throw. This will be caught by Brown. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. From the gun on third down, Jackson. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get the third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. And just a net of 31 here. 40-yard punt, 9 on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And again, this time to the tailback. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Being chased out left. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Oh, I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, lived to fight another down, right? He gets it to Cooks. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. And he'll be tackled right on the midfield logo. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. Now a handoff here to his running back. Room here to run! And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 56 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Play action here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 
Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll set up a throw. Forced out to his left. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. It's nothing like pressure to affect the accuracy and the timing of a guy trying to throw the football. And on that play, they ended up flushing him to his left, contacted him as he's trying to throw the football, and that led to the incompletion. Second and three. Flushed out right. Hit as he throws there, incomplete. So now it's third and goal. This Raven defense trying to keep him out of the end zone. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Fine work by the Baltimore defense to help bring up fourth down. Kick is good. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx it. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Well, I can certainly tell my age, partner, because when I was a kid, running backs like J.K. Dobbins with over 2,000 yards in their final season in college, they went early in the draft. Instead, he somehow lasted until the second round. But how great is it to get a guy with that ability who could run it inside, run to the perimeter, and catch the football out of the backfield, to be able to get him in the second round? That's what I call a steal. And now Jackson will look to throw it. And Jackson cannot get away, and he'll go down. He'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack, and it's third down. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team that had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on to kick it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Pulled in at the 24. 33 yards is the distance on the punt there. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. On third down, he'll drop to throw. 
He's going to loft one deep left side here. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So they bring out their putter as he'll punt it away for the second time. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. This pass complete, Jackson finding Andrews. And he gets all the way down to the 30-yard line. It's a big play there for Baltimore. So the big play has him all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. Option play, and they'll hand to Dobbins. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That was an excellent job of recognizing the situation. His first read wasn't there. Heck, his second read wasn't there. But he bought himself a little extra time scrambling out of the pocket, got to the sticks, and picked up the first down. Jackson's throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard in his second down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. So Markov... yardage for roughing the passer and I've seen this before on a screen pass not only are you rushing the passer you're rushing him deeper than normal and I think a little frustration kicks in at the end you're going to hit him anyway when you shouldn't here's Jackson got a man it's caught for a Ravens touchdown Tim Patrick his fifth Touchdown now on the year, and the Ravens have retaken the lead. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and the lead is now 14 to 10. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And we move to spotlighting Brandon Cooks. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that. Definitely. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. And got his man complete! off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A big connection on that one. 38 yards. And he 
he's going to get this inside the 30. First down now, but that clock rolling. He'll look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. to his right. Touchdown! Brandon Cooks with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Express have yet again retaken the lead. That could be an important swing right there. A touchdown in the final minute of the half to take the lead. And I like the point you just made there. Could be an important swing because now that they have the lead, if they can carry that into the locker room at the half, they'll feel really good about what they accomplished in the first two quarters. The extra point up and good, and it's now 17-14. Just a four-play drive that time. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. They will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. This Ravens offense heads back out there, led by Lamar Jackson. And he had the touchdown of the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverage his last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. Now Jackson on first down. He'll check this down to Dobbins out of the backfield. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. They set up the screen for Dobbins. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. Looking to throw again on second down. Jackson finding his big receiver, Patrick, over the middle. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the... Second quarter. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. So the field goal unit is coming on here. And boy, this is going to be darn near impossible. And this from the parking lot, from an even 70 yards out. And as is to be expected, this is nowhere near being good from that distance. And this score will stay right where it is. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. Well, partner, this is where I need the color commentator. I'm not sure what to say about that one. Yeah, you and me both, my man. Let's just let that one go and move on. Deal. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get to some of these scores around the NFL here in a busy week 14. 
We'll get started up at Lucas Oil Stadium in the capital city of Indianapolis, where it was definitely a game with some intrigue, as you can see by the scoreline. Julio Jones, a touchdown catch in the victory. From there, we make the short trip up I-65 to check in on the Bears at home, Soldier Field in Chicago. And in that one, it's the visiting Giants who have the lead. The Giants seem to be on their way to what would be a good victory. Finally, we'll save the biggest for last. We head to AT&T Stadium to see what's happening with the Cowboys at home in Arlington. And it's the visiting Washington football team who have the lead in that one. Van Jefferson, a touchdown reception. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out. We give it back to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. A field goal, the difference. 17-14 is the score. Back underway here now in this third quarter. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. He's had one of those games that any quarterback loves, not only being able to complete some passes, but some deep passes. And it's pretty to watch. I mean, it's an absolute joy to see, but let's face it, we got to give a little bit of credit where it's deserved, right? Well, the protection's been great protection's if that's where you're been, going. Yeah, protection's been phenomenal, but how about how it's been spotlighted, right? Our producer, Christian McLeod, our director, Kyle Burt, the rest of the crew, what they put together with these images and pictures, if you're an offensive lineman, that's what you're taking with you to contract time. <laughs> They're going to have a lot to take to contract time if this continues. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Two yards the loss, second and 12. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Here we go on second and 12. And he fires one incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Now back to throw. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. So possession goes over here on the punt. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs. But now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for the second half. Now it's Jackson. He'll get this one to Patrick. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Now it's Jackson. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. It could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Now after the punt on that play, we've got a man down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. The offense back out there at the line ready for their next drive. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. And he'll give it here to his running back. 
And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. The 71 yards for him on the ground now, as he has been terrific here this afternoon. throw now on first down. He'll buy some time right to the sideline and that is a heck of a catch as he was able to get both feet in. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. From the gun, they'll try to run it. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is what every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll look to throw here. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there. And that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run. But for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Second and seven. They'll set up to throw. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. They push him back eight yards that time on. Second down. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. A high throw there as this is knocked away down to the ground and incomplete. And on now is the punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong? You know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? And they'll begin by running the option. And he'll go down for a loss inside his own 5 at the 4. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Well, he's had success running the football in this one. Yeah, that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. One yard is the loss. They back up even further to a third and 15. Again, this is their fullback. Call it a gain of four, but not enough. The punt team going to need to be summoned here on fourth down. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. 43-yard punt, but they get nine back on the return. And this offense, they're going to have excellent field position. They take over with a first and ten on the short side of the field. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him? Maybe the guys up front combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed.
opens up that time as he'll be brought down just short of a first after a gain of about nine. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gun. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. To back good plays, have them on the move on first down. And again, this time to the tailback. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. Second and two. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Buying time to his left. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 of the 12. to throw here on first down. And it's caught. Touchdown. Brandon Cooks. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Express had six to their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. The call is to go for one and kick the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Five plays there on that drive. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. The Jackson going to run again. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. But sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion, and I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw a defensive end right in his face because he looked up, and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. He's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Jackson from the shotgun. And he's got his tight end. That's Andrews. 20, 10, and all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Mark Andrews with touchdown. Two in the game and now 11 on the year. And the Ravens draw a bit closer. Tucker with the X 
extra point, and the lead is down to a field goal. So the extra point good, and the roughing call going to move the ball out to the 50 for the kickoff. And I think this is a good chance to pin them deep if you can land the kickoff inside the five-yard line or so. Gain some field position for your defense. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line-wise for your card? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win? Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Looking to throw. And he'll throw this one away. I don't think he's out of the pocket, no. Here comes the flag. Clearly wasn't outside of the tackle box. There's your penalty. And accompanying that penalty, a loss of down. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's letting it fly for Cooks. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's letting it fly for Cooks, and that is incomplete. Now the coverage excellent there downfield, and it leads to a fourth down. And they'll send out their punter now, as he's on here to punt it away. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. The Ravens heading out on offense as we look at the playoff picture in the AFC. As of this moment, as pretty much everyone knows, they sit alone in that top spot, but nothing is guaranteed. They haven't even clinched the playoff. So a good start, but a long way to go. And you know a blunt veteran inside their locker room has stood up at one point or another and said, you know, that, you know all this means nothing so far. We've got to cover this, get it done. What do we want to be? It's like winning a title in August, right, in preseason. Doesn't count. Let's go ahead and get this thing done. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. The Ravens on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They go play action now. Jackson, and he's got his man, Marquise Brown. The 20. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Marquise Brown, his fourth touchdown. have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This is Javier Thomas. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Second and five. Very quickly here, and that's complete. 
And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. And now here's a carry heading left. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. And even 100 yards rushing for him so far in this one as he nears 1,400 for the year. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. Right back to him on first down. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Soft through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And he'll be brought down at the 27 yard line. First down, he'll drop to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Lambert. And they'll get this down to the 10. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Back to throw. And good throw here. That's complete. third touchdown now on the year and his guys have taken the lead here in the fourth well we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way extra point splits the uprights and that gives him a three-point lead so that drive in total eight plays the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. In trouble, and he's taken down. Eric Armstead in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. We've seen him escape similar situations earlier in the game and get away for pretty good yardage, and that time they get him down. Yeah, they've had enough evidence that he can get away and run for good yardage, haven't they? That time it felt like, okay, enough of this. Let's play it the right way and get him on the ground before he does any damage. And give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. On third down, Jackson finding the open man, and that's Tim Patrick. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. The Ravens send their punter out now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Fielded at about the 28. 
They'll score that a 36-yard punt. Charles, you said earlier this defense is probably going to need to hold these guys right around 20 or under that if they were going to have a chance. It was evident pretty early on that wasn't going to happen. Yeah, they left 20 behind a long time ago in this game, didn't they? It looks like they're headed towards a big, big number. But 20 was the threshold because that kept them in the ball game and kept the pressure off of their own offense. 110 yards rushing for him so far as his terrific season continues here. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Back to throw here. Steps away to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. How many times have we seen this late in the fourth quarter? Because you know the pass rush is getting after him. And they get upfield, get that great push. And what do they create? Space. And he takes off. They'll look to throw now on first down. Eluding the pressure right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. They'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. Dancing to his left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. The one with the dime look that time on defense just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Officially, that'll be marked down as just a 28-yard punt. And the Ravens will get it. First and 10 from deep in their own territory. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down 31-28. A little under a minute 50 remaining. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And they finally get him down at the other 46. Now Jackson, it's a big play there for Baltimore. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Counting down toward a minute to go in this football game. Here's Jackson. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Andrews. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Jackson. He'll swing this out to Dobbins. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. On second down, a run with Dobbins. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Throwing, Jackson. The hitter here, it's complete. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds remaining. From the five, second and four. A shotgun snap and a give to Dobbins. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Now a timeout called for by the offense. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave him with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. This to potentially send us to overtime. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and they will tie this game here in the final seconds. 
So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. Tie game, and barring something incredible here, we're likely headed to overtime. What I would do is either hand it off inside or more likely I take a knee and let the clock run out. Because if I'm back there trying to throw and a sack happens, the ball comes free, I can lose the game here. If I get to overtime, I can still win it. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. the kicks away and this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line the Raven offense set at the line for this next drive except for their first drive here in overtime and this is where the crowd can really become a factor they've had to battle it all day but I know what you're saying in overtime that gets double, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team, and that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. It's been loud in here so far. Jackson, draw play to Dobbins. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. First throw in overtime now for Jackson. He'll dump this off complete to Dobbins. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. The Ravens send their punter out now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. yards on the punt, two on the return, and that will come the offense as they take over. Back out comes San Antonio. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it, but they turned it back over to them, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Yeah, part one is done, now part two. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Hands it off out of the gun. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said, of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. few times here today. This run's not going to go anywhere. Marlon Humphrey with the tackle defensively. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Now here's a throw that's complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're an OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. When they say, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the J's. 
Adams, good tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. They'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Preston Smith, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. On play action, they'll throw. Oh, that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. 